So we'll start again, yeah. Yeah. So, so what made you walk away? Yes. From, so from, 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 from my primary interest yeah. is textual criticism. Yeah. So I looked into the textual history of the Quran, some of the issues within the narratives, uh, and I found it the narratives that doesn't stand up. The traditional outlook that the Quran is preserved yeah. in Aaron. All that kind of stuff, it just didn't stand up for me. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the Quran, it draws narratives from late Judeo-Christian literature, like the Talmud, Syriac Christian narratives about Jesus, Mary. Uh, like one, one example is uh, the Proto-Evangelium of James. It's an oh, apocryphal right. gospel. So it's not actually written by James. You know, the brother, uh, James the Just, St. James. St. James. Uh, the apocryphal gospel by him, it wasn't written by him. It's traced to Syria to a Gnostic group who believe sex and marriage were evil. And their gospel, their theology, very clearly pushes that. But some of the narratives about Mary in the Quran are drawn from that. So if the Quran is drawing narratives from false sources, which are not part of the like canonical scriptures of Christianity, and from Gnostic groups that are heretical, even to Islam, that means that it's a problematic source. And it also draws from the Talmud. The Talmud is the rabbinic commentaries on the Torah. That comes after the Temple. Uh, Quran, uh, it's in al maidah I forgot which verse it is now. Uh, it says, you know, decreed unto the children of Israel, whoever takes the life is as if they took the life of the whole world. You know that? Very famous verse, right? Yes, uh, yes. So the actual origin of that. So when it says we decree, the verb is kitabana, you know, written. So it implies, or at least it insists that it was decreed unto them either through the Torah or through some written revelation to, and we would assume it's Moses. Because the context of that verse is Abel and Cain, and that, that story is found in the Torah, which is obviously the five books of Moses. Just to clarify that, you put in the 532. Sorry? Surah 532. If you kill one innocent life, you can enter yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's a, that's a true. Actually, it was taken from the 3rd century. Yeah. Oh, right. And the book was called like, like, Sanhedrin. Chapter number 4. Yeah, Sanhedrin 37, A13. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Oh, so, the problem is it doesn't come from the Torah. It comes from the Sanhedrin in the Talmud. And it's a commentary on the Torah. It's not actually a verse itself. So, Muslims obviously rebuke you and saying, oh, but Muhammad was illiterate. How do you uh, plagiarize that? That actually plays into the argument more. Which is, we have scholarship that shows that the Medinan Jews were rabbinic. They knew about the Talmud, the Midrash, uh, and they even preached about it to the pagans. So, it's very likely that he, Muhammad heard this uh, rabbinic commentary, but because he was illiterate and had no way of fact checking, he believed it to be part of the scriptures. So, then when he, did, when he recited the verse to his Sahaba, who obviously had no way of checking either, uh, they believed that it was part of the Torah. But now that we look back on it, we can see that it wasn't. So, that, so they go, like, it's not inerrant. That's, that's, a, that's a very clear, glaring issue. And all the resolutions I found to it, this is not adequate. So, I found that that was such a glaring problem in the Quranic narrative. If it draws sources from, if it draws narratives from non-canonical sources, yes. well then, you know, it doesn't really have a claim to be, to be purifying scriptures. If it's taking it from Gnostic Gospels and the Talmud. You know, in, in the Quran also, the people, there is a verse where people accused Muhammad yeah. of copying the stories of the ancient Yeah, the stories yeah. of the ancient yeah. 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 Exactly, so, it is a... Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah talk to this as well. Yeah. You know, when you were a Muslim, yeah. you know, people are, they, they, they say that um, Muhammad yeah, is the greatest of all prophets. Yeah. But 600 years before, or, yes, or maybe, maybe a, bit, a, bit, a bit earlier, yes, Christ already claimed that the greatest, that, that, that judgment had already been made yeah. by, by, by Jesus. Yeah. Claiming that John the Baptist was the greatest yeah. of all prophets since the time of Moses until now. So and this, why yeah. did Moses make that claim? I mean, ultimately, uh, this is ignorance, really, ultimately, isn't it? Like, this is ignorance of the prior scriptures. Yes. Because that judgment's already been made. Yeah, yeah. like I said. And once you actually start looking into the narratives, it just falls yes. apart. Like, I spent my entire life not reading the Bible, not reading the Old Testament, uh, not reading church traditions. I, I 
my view on Christian theology was what I had been taught. Okay. When I started, was, like, was it like playing along? Yeah, pretty much. It was what I had been taught by, you know, your parents, your imam, uh, different scholars, so on and so forth. The main reason is they have been yes. taught since the childhood. Yes. That you have to believe this. And if you see the Quran, it says clearly that if you ask questions, then you are happy. Yeah. And Allah will send you to Jahannam. Yeah. So that is the fear put in the children, you know? So I would press that, yeah. So what, what, the, what the answer there, I'll, I'll get it, yes? I would call that no humility at all. No. That Islam has no humility. And that you're humility. not allowed to use your brain. Yeah. No. You, you, you can't question the narrative. And the problem is the narrative is ignorant. The, the narrative has no idea what Christians believe. It's very evident Muhammad didn't know what Christians believe. No. You know, he said that they took Mary as a deity. That, that's not the case. So it's really obvious that he didn't know what they believed. And most Muslims don't know what Christians believe in either. They, they believe that, like, we affirm modalism or something. You know, because they don't understand how the Trinity works. Uh, I see, yeah, I see, yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. So, for my entire life, that's how I believe the Trinity works, because I didn't ask Christians. Or, you find, you know, Christians who are not educated enough to tell you about it, so they can't explain it either. So you'll just kind of go down this rabbit hole of what the Muslims actually believe is. When I started looking at, uh, it was actually St. Thomas Aquinas, was the first one I started looking into. His, uh, his Summa Theologica, the five ways, uh, divine simplicity, so on and so forth. And then I started looking at more into Catholic theology, and it was a lot more coherent than I had been led to believe. There was, yeah. So once I found the coherence and the kind of, uh, just how much it made sense, Catholic theology, um, First, I would say, I, I didn't immediately become a Catholic. I looked into different denominations. Okay, okay. I, I, I almost became a Lutheran. Uh, in the end, I became a Catholic. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was really just looking into the theology for myself and not taking other people's words for it. It's, it's, it's how it should be done. See, yeah. I think many of us, in reality, yeah, what we do, we do. Yeah, that's what it well probably expect as well. Yeah, dude is a very, 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 very bold yeah. person. But it's like coming out of our comfort zone, would you say? Would you say, yes? No. We're too stuck in our comfort zones. No, no. Many, many people, you're stuck in our comfort zones and you can't be bothered to take like big people. Yeah. Like, would you, would you say, in Islam, yes, are they stuck in their comfort zone too much? Or, or are they afraid to take like steps back and have a look and ask questions? They are afraid. Yeah, I think it's fear. I think the fear because the family will abandon yeah. them. Yes. And how did your family? How did your family bear? I, I haven't told them. So I, I haven't told them because I'm very aware yes. of the fact that uh, you know I'll be disowned, and I'm fine with it. But uh, I'm just waiting until I'm able to like move out, you know, financially support myself before I tell them. And are you uh, ready to take that? You know, yeah, you know, the thing you, is, you, I'm ready to take that because one yeah. day you have to make that confession. Yeah, of course. And I, and I thought about it very much. There was actually uh, for me when I first became a Christian, or yes. when I accepted Christianity as a true. Uh, I kind of resolved myself to just privately believe in it, not go to church, that kind of stuff. I knew I wanted to be a Catholic, but I just couldn't. I was too scared to kind of take that step. And um, one story that is quite like intimate and personal to me is St. Peter's martyrdom. When he's leaving Rome, and he's leaving the persecution, and he sees a vision of Christ, and he says, where are you going, Lord? He says, where are you going, yeah. I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. So I still feel in my, in my, in my mind that St. Peter, obviously, going back into Rome, it's not as if he had no fear or anything like that. You know, he knew he was going to his death. I'm still obviously fearful. I still have doubts and concerns. But it's just my love for Christ is much stronger than my fear of, it, of any repercussions that I'll get. So I'm fine to accept being disowned. You know, I'm fine to live on my own. Like, I, I, like I'm making the steps necessary to financially support myself. So I'm, Yes, yeah. as well. I request you also yeah, to stand. Stand yeah. in it, yes. Not with. Yeah, yeah. Yes, not, not stand alone. Yeah. Yes, but to lean upon one another. In the act of filial love. Filial love obviously equals brotherly love. Yes, on loving thy neighbor as I love thyself. Yeah. And the act of stronger love. Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, yeah, verse 9, yeah, it teaches us. Yeah. It teaches us that two are better than one. Yeah. We're not meant to do things alone. Yeah. Obviously, yes. So please, well, be like the branches of the tree. Do you, yes, Jesus said we are branches of the same vine. So let us lean upon each other. It's all get love. And Christianity okay. is the main thing, it's a family. Yeah. Yes. yes. In Christianity, there are lukewarm Christians. But if you stay with the strong Christians, you'll be a good family. Amen. Iron mm -hmm. sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the other. Yeah. Yes. yes. Proverbs, yeah. <laughs> There's neither Jew nor Greek. Can well, brothers and sisters. Can I ask you, right, 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 right. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. Yeah. Are you like Thank born you and brought up here, or Take you came care. back from Sorry? Like an Islamic country? How are you are? Like? Sorry? You came from Islamic country? No, I was born here. Oh, you were born here? Yeah. yeah. 